One of the things that porn does to you is it stunts your development in terms of your sexual maturity. It makes you or keeps you sexually immature. So let's talk about what that means, what to do about it, and why you would even want to become sexually mature. To explain, let me tell a story of when I was a kid. The first meal that I learned how to cook, the first kind of food I learned how to make for myself was porridge. And I remember at one point I made myself a bowl of porridge and I was at home alone and I got some sugar and I started adding sugar to my porridge and I ate it and I thought, oh, this is good. And I added more sugar and I ate some more and I kept piling on sugar into my bowl of porridge. There was apparently no upper limit to how sweet I liked my porridge. Now, if either of my parents had been around, they would have stopped me from doing this. After like one spoonful of sugar, they would have said, that's enough. And it would have taken the sugar away from me. And that's a good thing because at the time, as a child, I did not have a mature relationship to food. And that meant I couldn't self-regulate. I was just, hey, sugar is nice. I like sweet things. So more sugar must be better. And in this situation, the parents are in charge because they've had time to develop a more mature relationship to food. And they're like standing in because the child can't do it yet. The parents are there to regulate the things that the child can't regulate yet. Later in life, we need to develop a mature relationship with food. And this takes time. You learn impulse control and things like that over time as you mature. And as an adult, you have to at some point come to the realization that yes, if you want to, you can go and buy an entire birthday cake for yourself every single day and eat the whole thing and nobody can stop you. But if you actually do that, you will suffer all kinds of problematic consequences. And so you have to learn to self-regulate. So that's one of the two factors of developing a mature relationship to food is to say, look, even though I would like to have deep fried sugar glazed junk food every day for every meal, there's part of me that goes, yeah, let's have that. I have to be able to regulate that and say, no, I'm going to eat my veggies. I'm going to eat healthy food and I'm going to make desserts, sweets and treats a, a once in a while kind of thing. There's a second factor to developing maturity. And let me tell you a different story related to that. A couple of months ago, I went to Copenhagen. I went to a restaurant called Noma, which is widely regarded as the best restaurant in the world. And I had a meal there. And this is super, super high end food. This is food as art. You get, you know, dozens of courses and every course is usually a little bite of something that someone took, you know, 45 minutes to prepare all the details of these, this little arrangement of things on a tiny little cracker or something, right? If you're watching the video version of this, I'll throw in some pictures of the kinds of food you have there. This is super high end stuff and it's very, very sophisticated. And yes, the food is amazing. I would say that the best food I've ever tasted was in this restaurant. But if I experience this kind of food as the five year old who likes to have unlimited sugar in his porridge, I probably wouldn't appreciate it. You know, I take a little, I get this little thing and I just bite it down immediately and I'd be like, well, What's the point of this? Why do I have to wait so much between these courses? And I'd rather just have, you know, French fries and ice cream. That's the second factor of developing maturity. It takes time to develop an appreciation of more subtle and more complex things. So that's how developing maturity looks like in relation to food. And you've probably had this thought as I was talking, it's like, oh, not everyone manages to develop a mature relationship with food, right? A lot of people do not have a mature relationship with food. And this is part of the reason why we have an obesity epidemic. And obviously, you can see how it would be beneficial. It's beneficial for people to develop a mature relationship with food because by doing so, you avoid all these health issues that come from overconsuming extremely unhealthy foods. And also you're able to enjoy a richer, more complex kind of food. Of course, as I'm sure you've guessed, this is all analogous to sex and porn addiction. Porn, just like junk food, is something you have to learn to self-regulate because there's a part of you that will just always go, oh, we can have sex, you know, quote unquote sex. We can essentially experience something that seems like sexual and reproductive success by watching porn and jerking off. Let's do it. Let's do more of it. This is great, right? There's a part of you that always wants this. And you have to learn to self-regulate just like you have to be able to say, no, we're not going to have a birthday cake every day. You have to be able to say, no, we're not going to jack off to porn every day. Porn really is a lot like sugar. It's also hyper stimulating like that. It also is something that the more you have of it, the more you want of it, it increases the cravings, the more you give in. And it is absolutely important for your health to be able to regulate this.
So if you have a porn addiction, and even if you don't think of it as an addiction, if you have the habit of watching porn frequently, then that is a sign of your immaturity in this area of life, right? You're, you're letting that inner animal run wild that just says yes to every single opportunity for any, anything that seems like sex. And of course, you will be healthier and happier if you learn to regulate this. But this is where I see a lot of the quit porn and no fab stuff end. And it stops short of the second factor, which is just as important, which is the ability to develop a deeper appreciation for a more rich and complex experience of sex. So an immature, simple, undeveloped relation with sex and sexuality is kind of just, I want, let's do it, right? I like boobs, let's look at boobs. More boobs, better. Right? That's immature. And of course, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with liking boobs, but there is more to developing your sexuality and your sex life. A mature sexuality and a mature relationship to sex would be a deeper appreciation of the complexities and the nuances that come with actual partnered in real life sex. There's a whole aspect there of, of the communication with another person. There is also intimacy, there is closeness, there's vulnerability. And these things can be scary. I speak very much from experience here. This is something I struggled with a lot and it's still a challenge for me sometimes. Having intimacy with another person is scary or it can be scary, it can feel scary. And of course, it can feel much safer to just have an outlet with porn where nobody can reject you, it's completely impersonal and you know, basically nothing can go wrong or it feels safe, you stay inside your comfort zone. When you are interacting with another person and when you're getting deeper into a real, intimate, deep connection with that person, things can get scary and you will definitely be leaving your comfort zone when you do that. But of course, the flip side is that also, this is where you have the deepest, richest, most intense experiences sexually, is when you're not just, you know, hooking up with randos or going to prostitutes and strip clubs or watching porn. It is when you dare to be vulnerable and to be intimate and to go deeper, that's where you unlock the true richness and depth that can be part of your sex life. So my point here is basically that developing a mature relationship and maturing in all areas of your life is a way to live a higher quality life. So having a mature relationship with food means that you are healthier, that you're happier, and that you get to experience a more subtle, higher level of enjoyment from food. And developing maturity when it comes to sex basically means the same thing. It means that you're not an addict. It means that you are mentally healthier. You know, you're not wringing out your dopamine system with porn every day. And you get to open up the door to experiencing deeper, more meaningful, and ultimately more intense and better sex in your life. So with that said, how come most guys are not sexually mature? What went wrong here and what can we do about it? I believe that most of us are sexually immature because we're simply never taught, we're never given a framework or any lessons or any guidance for this. I mean, most people's sexual history looks something like this. At some point when you're pretty young, you discover something sexual, you discover porn, you discover maybe a dirty magazine, whatever, right? You, you come across this and you maybe whisper with your friends about, oh, you know, you're starting to learn about sex is a thing. And it's usually associated with secrecy and shame. You feel like, so maybe you discover porn at a young age and on the one hand, it's, it's fascinating, but you also kind of realize, oh, I'm sh I shouldn't be seeing this. And if my parents knew about this, this would be a problem. So immediately there's this veil of secrecy and guilt and shame associated with the topic of sex. And at some point, you're probably given the talk, right? Some adult in your life gives you the talk and it's probably very awkward and stiff and it really doesn't make you feel that much better. It, it Still, it feels like, oh, somehow people don't want to talk about this. This is, this is a difficult topic. Everyone's like stiff and awkward and weird. And so we, keep, we stay in this frame of this is somehow secret, maybe bad. Maybe there's also some religious subtext, right? Where they say, oh, this is sinful. You know, you're not allowed to have sex until you're married and you're not allowed to touch yourself and God will be very angry with you and so on. So again, we have like layers and layers of like discomfort and tension and shame on this topic of sex. And apart from like the mechanics, you know, here's how it works. Here's where babies come from. Use a condom, that kind of stuff. 
that's that's it. That's the information you get. And, and then you're basically left to your own devices. As a young person, you probably know that you shouldn't be wanting sex and watching porn and masturbating all the time and stuff like that. You have the sense that this is somehow bad. I shouldn't be doing it, but you can't stop yourself from doing it. And that's basically where most guys get stuck in their development, right? You, you have grown ass men walking around who still have the exact same relation to sex that I just described here, which is to say that it's always something secretive. There's always tension. It's always awkward. It's something they keep secret from their friends, their girlfriends, their wives. And whatever your thing is, is watching porn or going to strip clubs or whatever, you do it behind the backs of people who care about you and you feel bad about it. You feel shameful and guilty about it. Most men simply will remain at the mercy of their urges and desires, right? They're just like, well, I have these urges and so I have to jack off to porn. And nobody has taught you how to deal with this. Nobody has taught you an alternative. It's just like, oh, that's just how it is. And this is this kind of weird aspect of my life that I hope nobody finds out about. And that's it. You have men in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, etc., who have this level of immaturity with their own sexual urges and with their sex life. As I see it, you have three options available to you. One is to just do nothing and just have this be one of the kind of secretive problems that follows you throughout the rest of your life. Obviously, I don't recommend that because overcoming your porn addiction is a huge growth opportunity. The second option is to try and handle this bad habit with kind of brute force. And this is often the kind of model that comes out of comparisons to, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous and other substance abuse areas where you treat it like that. You go, okay, you know, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. You, you have to take it one day at a time. You know, you're, you're always going to be basically one beer away from a full on binge and fully resetting back to your bad habits. A lot of people in the NoFab community seem to be taking that kind of approach where, where that's how they feel is like, okay. I've been, you know, I've managed to not watch porn and not touch myself for 500 days. And sometimes it feels like they're holding on, right? They're holding on white knuckle. Any moment something can trigger me and I have to make sure to avoid, you know, I can't go to the beach because there'll be women in bikinis there and that's just, I can't handle it. Right? That will trigger me into an extreme porn binge, stuff like that, right? You can try and cope with it and try and handle your urges with brute force. I think this is not the ideal solution. And I, I don't think you have to live like this. And this is where the whole quit by healing approach is different from what you typically find on this topic. Because the third option is that you do both of the things that we've talked about so far. You do learn to control your urges, but you also develop a more mature sexuality. So yes, you do have to quit porn and you have to learn to deal with your urges. If you're a heavy porn user, you're probably also like hypersexualized. This is quite common that you'll have very strong urges. So when you quit porn after using it for a long time, you'll kind of want it all the time and you'll have strong urges maybe several times a day. But as your brain heals from this, as you get unused to this habit you built over many years, that calms down a lot. And it's actually not the case that you have to like fight this strong urge, you know, several times a day for the rest of your life. Usually this calms down quite a lot, especially if you replace your bad porn habit with positive replacement habits, such as exercise, meditation, spending time in nature, socializing, and so on. A really important part of this is also that you learn to accept your urges and sit with them so that you don't feel like the urge is a bad thing that I have to avoid at all costs. I have to avoid at all costs to be triggered in any way and instead learn to feel the sexual desire, feel the urge, and just observe it. Just let it pass. Just like you can feel the desire to have a donut and go, you know what, that would be really nice, but it's not in line with my health goals. And so I'm going to say no to that. And I can just let that pass. I can go, hey, right now I'd really like a donut. And guess what? 20 minutes from now, I will have forgotten about it. So you can learn to surf the urge. You can learn to be okay with these desires rising and falling. The second thing that I recommend doing is working with the feelings of shame and guilt that you have around sex and sexuality, working with any kinds of traumas that are there. And obviously that one way you can do that is through therapy, but I'm also a huge believer in self-therapy through things like introspective writing. So if you just take the time to introspect and to write about these topics, so take your feelings of shame and guilt and things like that around sex and sexuality, start writing about that, start writing out 
what you feel like and start questioning some of those for like, why do I feel like this? Where does this come from? Why do I keep telling myself this story? If you make a habit of this kind of writing and over the span of a few weeks or months, you even just spend a few dozen hours doing this kind of introspective writing, I think you'll be surprised at how much progress you can make and how many things that are lurking in your psyche can be resolved just by bringing awareness to them, just by bringing that awareness to them through writing. By resolving these issues and shame and fear around sex, that will open you up to the possibility of what I talked about before, of like being able to have intimacy and vulnerability with another person. It can become something that you no longer constantly run away from because you've examined why you ran away from this in the first place and you've been able to work that out. Now, a third thing I want to mention here that I think is important and I kind of want to paint a picture of immature versus mature sexuality is learning to modulate your desire. So as a man, you feel desire. If you're walking around in the world, you see a very attractive woman that does something to you. And look, that's a real thing. That's a biological thing. I don't think that's anything to be ashamed of. Again, if you're in the situation where you don't have to give in to every urge, where seeing an attractive person doesn't send you into some kind of a porn binge, then there's nothing wrong with seeing a beautiful person and feeling desire. Now, imagine that you meet a beautiful stranger. She's gorgeous. She's feminine. She's your type. What happens next? If we stay stuck in a relatively immature state of sexuality, then this will basically be a problem, right? You see this attractive person and it's triggering you. And that can mean that you are overly sexualizing this person. You can't actually experience them as a whole person. You're just so obsessed with trying to imagine them naked and then think, oh, how great would it be to have sex with her and stuff like that, right? Or it triggers you in the sense that you feel like, oh my God, there's an attractive person. I have to get away. This is triggering me. And you know, you rush to the private space and you go into a huge porn binge and then you feel guilty. That is immature sexuality. Something triggers your desire and it basically ruins your day. Another form of immature desire is that you see this beautiful stranger and you immediately have to hit on her and maybe even if she's super uncomfortable and it's really not appropriate, you just, you just have to, you can't help yourself. So what does the mature man do in this situation? Well, it depends a lot on the context, right? The mature man can see this beautiful person, can acknowledge that, hey, this person is beautiful. I feel desire right here. And then can modulate the expression of that desire depending on the context. Because think about it, if you are a married man and you're meeting this beautiful stranger at a business conference, what is the appropriate expression of desire? That's probably zero or very close to zero, right? You just keep it professional. You just go, hey, this is, there's this desire arising in me and I don't have to act on it at all. And I can experience this person as a person and I can do the business stuff I'm here to do. That's mature. Because if the situation is different, if you're single and you're meeting this beautiful stranger in a casual setting, then expressing some of your desire is appropriate. And you can maybe start flirting a little bit. And if she responds positively, then you can turn it up and flirt more. And that could then lead to maybe a sexual interaction. Maybe she becomes your next girlfriend, your future wife, whatever, right? But the point is, you're able to modulate that. Instead of freaking out because you're being triggered by a beautiful person, you can recognize the context and you can express some of your desire. And if there is positive feedback, you can express more of it. And here's an important point here. The mature man realizes that his desire is sometimes inappropriate and best kept to himself, but sometimes it is a beautiful gift. So maturity is about having a choice and staying in control, which also means you have to be able to stay in the present moment, right? If you're freaking out and you're escaping in your head because you're afraid of being triggered or you are fantasizing in your head and you're no longer present, then you can't be in a situation where you can read the signals properly and even figure out whether it's okay or not to express your desire in this moment. So it's about staying in control not being a victim of every whim that comes your way and staying present to the moment. So I hope I've managed to paint a picture here to show the difference between, first of all, not doing anything at all about your porn addiction and your sexual immaturity and just drifting through life versus trying to like manage it, trying to suppress it versus actually developing a mature sexuality. And the quit by healing approach is very much about that third thing, right? It's about going beyond just managing your urges, beyond just 
removing porn from your life and leaving everything else the same. We want to take it one step further and we want to remove the porn habit from your life, but then also figure out what were the underlying issues that made you an addict in the first place and how do we resolve those issues? And then how do we develop a healthy, mature sexuality from that basis? So let me know your thoughts about this. And if you have any questions on this topic, I'd love to hear them and I'd be happy to answer them in a future video or a future podcast episode. You can go to the YouTube video and leave a comment right there. You can also go to anchor.fm forward slash QBH or quit by healing. And there is a plus message button there. You can click that to leave a voice message that I can answer in future content. And of course, you can join my Discord and ask questions there and get answers from me directly as well. And the link is in the video description and in the podcast episode description. So with that, thank you for listening. I look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you in the next one.